Hello and welcome to my channel. iGoose is well known for the low-cost automation. And this low-cost automation also includes the affordable robot arms. And today I would like to talk about one of these robot arms, Robolink DP5, also known as RL DP5. And I would like to look at the three points. First of all, the characteristic of this robot arm. Second, to understand how iGoose was able to make it affordable. And the third point, to check the mechanics of this robot arm. So to look at the which motors they use, which reducers at which joint and stuff like this. So let's get started. iGoose plastic for longer life. So this is the robot arm I was talking about, RL DP5. So this is the robot arm itself. As I told, this robot arm has 5 degrees of freedom. I think this is kind of disadvantage, so it's not 6 or 7. But advantage that the price of this robot arm is quite low, it's around 4000 US dollars. You should be careful that this price does not include controller. And the controller adds another 3000 to this price. So the controller is very expensive. So if you would like to buy this robot arm, I think the cheapest option is to buy this robot arm without controller and build this controller by yourself. I think you can build quite decent controller under 200, maybe 250 US dollars. And this is because this entire robot arm, it uses the stepper motors. So there is no brushless motors, all the motors in all five axes are steppers. The payload of this robot arm is 30 newtons, so it's 3 kilogram. It's not super fast, but I think it's decent speed, which is uh, acceptable for many applications. Reach is slightly higher than the reach of the human arm. And what is interesting is that the precision of this robot arm is under one millimeter. So it's 0.5 millimeter, which is really nice. Also, you should pay attention that this robot arm is quite heavy, like 20 kilos. By the way, here there is a working space of this robot arm. So the distance from the shoulder joint to the wrist joint, so from here, to here is 620 millimeters and I think the human arm size is around 600 millimeters. So this robot arm is just slightly bigger than the human arm. And on the download tab you can find the step file of this robot arm which we're going to look in the details right now. This is a step file of this robot arm. It's black one. I don't really like black because uh, you don't see much details. So I made a colored version. And this is beautiful colored version. Now let's try to understand how I was, was able to make this robot arm affordable. To understand this, let's hide some plastic parts of this robot arm. Like this cover, this cover, this one, this one too, and also these two. So now we can see the naked robot arm. And the first thing which you see is that there are plastic covers which we just hide it and also the rest, the structural part of the robot arm is made out of sheet metal, which is not very expensive way of uh, making the parts. And only over here the plastic parts are also the structural parts on the last joint. So you see that the last joint is mounted on these plastic covers. So this is the first thing which makes this robot arm affordable, that it's made out of the plastic parts plus the metal sheet parts, which are quite cheap. Another point is that all gearboxes are made mostly out of plastic. So this is for the Axis 1, it's warm gearbox. Here there is also warm gearbox. On the Axis number 3, there is again warm gearbox and warm gearbox at the axis number 4. And only at the axis number 5, there is a strain wave gearbox. So the second point, all the gearbox is mostly made out of plastic. And this is how it looks, this warm gearbox inside. So there is this warm gear and this gear. I think this gear is made out of plastic. This one is made out of metal, at least uh, in this uh, robot arm. And bearings, they are also metal bearings. And as Igus, they are specialists in the plastic, they were able to make this main gearbox out of slippery plastic to reduce the friction and like this, this entire warm gearbox is quite efficient. Because normal warm gearboxes, they are not really efficient and that's why they are not very widely used in the robotics. Normally warm gearboxes have a lot of friction. And the third point which makes this robot arm affordable is motors. In all axes they use stepper motors, not the brushless motors as usually used in other robot arms. At the axis 1, 2, 3 they use NEMA 23 motor. At the axis 4 I think it's NEMA 17. And over here it's NEMA 17 too. So this is three main reasons which makes this robot arm affordable. The reduction ratio at each joint is between 28 and 50. And as I told, in the last joint they use train wave gearbox. And we can look inside of this gearbox. So let me hide all the other parts. And let's now look inside. So let's hide this part. 
we don't need this screw we can hide this casing let's hide this part and this one this is just the bearings to support the output let's look the cross section of this piece and we see over here the strain wave generator with two bearings we see the flex spline over here and this is our output and this green one is the fixed gear let's hide this piece too this is our flex spline this is how it looks like let's hide the bearings and so this is our output piece and this is the fixed piece and so if we look we see that there is two motifs on the fixed piece compared to the output piece so that's why there is this reduction cool now we know how this train wave gearbox works recently i have received this huge box from ibus and this was this exact robot arm huge thank you to ibus so now we can play with it and you will see how to set up this robot arm and how to use it Ta-da! so the idea is that we're going to use this robot arm build our own controller i hope that the price of our diy controller is going to be under 200 dollars and like this the price for the robot arm and for the controller is going to be less than 4.5 thousand us dollars and today instead of building everything on the table we're going to build everything under the table because on the table there is no enough space this is my messy floor and over there there are aluminum profiles which i have bought for the base of this robot arm so first we need to build this base this base is made from 40 by 40 aluminum profiles but in order to fix the robot arm i'm going to use these brackets which are 30 by 30 millimeters so these brackets are for the 30 by 30 aluminum profiles and I'm going to use them over here to fix the robot arm and it's going to work perfectly well you will see and now we are ready to fix the arm this is the robot arm itself just to remind you it weighs 22 kilos so it's not going to be easy to install it alone it also has a super long cable 4 meters which I don't really need now you see that these brackets works perfectly well and it's almost aligned now I need to bolt it to the base and over here in this hole I need to put a screw with a low profile head because there is no much clearance over there and so when the robot arm is going to rotate this part is going to pass over the screw the robot arm is mounted on this base and i'm really happy with the result it's maybe a little bit overkill but it's uh, quite solid and it's also on the wheel so it's easy to transport and the first thing which i notice that there is no any noticeable backlash there is a flex but no backlash another thing which i notice that this joint can be back drived slowly but still back drived which is quite impressive for the warm gearbox this means that in this gearbox there is no much friction all the motors of this robot arm have the encoder at the back of the motor this is incremental encoder with the index and with differential signal and in order to run this robot arm we need the controller the controller we're going to build in the next video but in this video i would like to explain my plan and my plan is over here on the table for the power supply i'm going to use this 24 volts 400 watts power supply and this converter to convert 24 volts to the 5 volts this is my emergency stop button it's not a great one but it's cheap for the brains i'm going to use either arduino mega or tinzi 4.0 i will try to do everything with the tinzi 4.0 and only if it doesn't work i will go to the arduino mega and for the driver initially i plan to use this sl57y driver which also takes the signal from the encoder the only problem is that uh, you need to set up the proper value of the pulse per revolution for the encoder but after i've discovered this module this is tmc5160 this chip and these are the mosfets and i think this could be a really good solution for this robot arm because this chip uses spi and instead of sending the step and direction signal you can send directly the maximum speed acceleration and desired position you can also connect the encoder to this driver but only the single-ended encoder not the differential encoder so you need to transform this differential signal into single-ended signal for this we can use the optocouplers but we need a three optocouplers per encoder so this uh, becomes uh, a little bit more complicated than just using 
this driver. But the idea is to make the controller quite cheap and this driver costs two times less than this one. This is uh, around $40 and this one is around $20. So I will try to use these drivers and especially I like them more because you can directly control the position, speed and acceleration and not just step and direction. So I will try to base my controller on this driver and this microcontroller. Another point, I'm not sure that this driver is powerful enough for the base motors of the robot arm, but we will check this. So in order to test this driver and in order to see how to control this driver using the Tinzi, I'm going to make a simple test bench where I can easily test all of this. I have unmounted two screws at the back and I'm going to replace them with the longer screws. So like this, I can mount this motor on the base. This plate will hold the encoder and on the encoder itself, over here there is a deep switches and in these switches I chose the position with which this encoder is going to give us 500 pulses per revolution. The same resolution as the encoders on the IGUS robot arm. This plate has the embedded nuts, so this plate goes on top of the motor. We need a green color for our 5mm shaft. The plate for the encoder is installed. Now the encoder itself. I have already prepared the cable for the encoder. And these are connecting plates which are going to connect everything. Tinsy goes here, the driver goes here, connector for the motor, connector for the encoder, one more zip tie over here and everything looks clean and perfect. Now we need to program it, but I'm going to do this in the next video because I need to prepare everything. I'm pretty sure I will have plenty bugs in my program. And I think it would be a little bit complicated because there are a lot of parameters which you need to set up in this TMC5160. Thank you for watching this video till the end. Please put the like to this video. It costs you nothing, but it helps me to promote my channel in YouTube. Another thing which helps me a lot is support from Patreon and YouTube channel membership. Here are the names of all these brave people. Thanks to them this channel exists. Really, only thanks to them. As usual, stay safe, good luck with your projects and see you next time.